Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. This is going to be part two of I Serpents, Isaiah 65. So we're going to read verse 1. Isaiah 65 and verse 1. Get your King James Bible out and please read along. I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, Behold me, behold me, unto a nation that was not called by my name. So, in verse 1, we found out that, I mean, in part 1, we found out that God had divorced Israel. So, this is part 2. All right, let's go to Romans chapter 10. Now, Paul's writing to people in Rome. Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness... Now, what does it mean to be ignorant? It means you don't know something. It doesn't mean you're stupid. It just means you have a lack of knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Now, Christ isn't the end of the law. He's the end of those that would try to keep the law to show that they are righteous. See, their righteousness in their minds is their keeping the law. And there's a whole group of people, Jews, that call themselves the Noahides. They talk about keeping the laws that God gave to Noah. Where's that in the Bible? It's not. It's only in the mind of a Jew. Uh, it's not in the Bible. God didn't give any laws to Noah that's in the Bible. It's all what they call oral commentary, the oral law. Well, I mean, I could say, well, yeah, God told Noah he had to stand on his head and say booga, booga, booga three times every day to be saved. That doesn't mean it's true. No, absolutely. But they believe Noahides, these Noahide Jews, believe that everybody should keep laws that they've made up, that they attribute to Mo, uh, Noah. And they say that's how you become righteous. Well, guess what? Paul says, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness that every to everyone that believeth. For Moses, not Noah, for Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart, Who shall ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee. What word? The word of God. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. You see, Christ had to be God in the flesh. Because if he wasn't, if he was just a mere human, he couldn't possibly have kept the law perfectly. And oh, by the way, the Noahides... You know who they say kept the law perfectly? Not Jesus, they say. They have a guy that was named uh, Rabbi Menachem Schneerson. 
Yeah, that's who they say kept the law perfectly. And they're, he died a number of years ago, and they're still waiting for him to uh, come back to life and claw his way out of the casket up through the ground in the graveyard. Uh, I don't think so, but what can I tell you? So, in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31 and verse 33, we write, But this shall be the covenant. Now, what's a covenant? It's like a contract. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. Okay, back to Romans chapter 10, verse 8. But what saith it? The word, the word of God that is, the word is nigh thee. What is nigh? It means it's near. The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart, that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You know what, people? That's the gospel right there. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. You see, believing what God has provided his only begotten Son, that's where our righteousness is, not keeping the Noahide laws or any laws. No. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the Scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Well, that's a good question. How are the Jews going to get saved if they don't believe on him and they don't call on his name? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. All right, so let's read that again. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. All right, well, let's go to Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. And then Jesus uh, then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he, Jesus, but he answered and said, It is written. See, when Satan comes to you and says some bad things, you should answer. It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, 
If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, concerning thee, and in their hands shall they bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Uh, my note, they probably pale. It probably looks like a piece of lead compared to uh, heaven where Jesus came from. You know, if, if heaven's like gold, the earth must look like a pile of dirt or piece of lead, you know. Dull, gray, dirty. That's the glory of them. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, for it is written, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. You see, when you answer the devil with scripture, he's, he's going to hightail it out of there. He's going to leave, right? All right, so back to Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First, Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation will I anger you. But Esaias is very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. Isn't that what we just read in Isaiah 65 in verse 1? Exactly. It's the same thing. But Isaiah, that's the Greek rendering of the uh, word is Isaiah. But Isaiah is very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel he saith, All day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. All right, let's go to Isaiah 65. Let's start in verse 1. I am sought of them that asked not for me. I am, I am found of them that sought me not. I said, Behold me, behold me, unto a nation that was not called by my name. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people. That sounds just like the USSA, doesn't it? Which walketh in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. A people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face, that sacrificeth in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of brick which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments, which eat swine's flesh and broth of abominable things is in their vessels. Makes you not want to eat ham, uh, a, a ham sandwich at Easter, doesn't it? Which say, Stand by thyself, come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. Have you ever heard that? I am holier than thou. These are a smoke in my nose, a fire that burneth all the day. Behold, it is written before me, I will not keep silence, but will recompense, even recompense into their bosom. Uh, that's payback, people. Verse 7, Your iniquities and the iniquities of your fathers together, saith the Lord, which have burned incense unto the mountains and blast me blasphemed me upon the hills. Therefore will I measure their former work into their bosom, 
Thus saith the Lord, As the new wine is found in the cluster, and one saith, Destroy it not, for a blessing is in it, so will I do for my servant's sake that I may not destroy them all. See, God's going to God's gonna have an, uh, his remnant. Okay, verse 9. And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob, and out of Judah an inheritor of my mountains, and mine elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell there. There's that dirty word, elect. You know who makes the, you know who makes the elect choice? God does. Verse 10. And Sharon shall be a fold of flocks, and the valley of Achor a place for the herds to lie down in, for my people that have sought me. But, but ye are they that forsake the Lord, that forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for that troop, and that furnish the drink offering unto that number. Therefore will I number you to the sword, and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter, because when I called, ye did not answer. When I spake, ye did not hear, but did evil, but did evil before mine eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. And he's talking, you know, my servants are going to drink, but you people that are not my servants, you're going to be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall howl for vexation of spirit. And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. Ah, another dirty word. God has a chosen people. God forbid ye believe that Christians are the chosen people. And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. For the Lord God shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. What name is that? I think it's Christians, but that's just me. Verse 16. That he who blesseth himself in the earth shall bless himself in the God of truth, and he that sweareth in the earth shall swear by the God of truth, because the former troubles are forgotten, because they are hid from mine eyes. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. But be ye glad and rejoice for ever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing, and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem, and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die an hundred years old, but the sinner being an hundred years old shall be accursed or accursed. And they shall build houses and inhabit them, inhabit them and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build an another inhabit, they shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall enjoy long, shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. How's that? And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock. Now think about that. Do the lambs and the wolf eat the same thing? No. A wolf's a meat eater. 
and a lamb eats uh, grass, right? And since when does a lion eat straw like a bull or a bullock? So this is obviously future. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and dust shall be the serpent's meat. Huh, where have I read that before? Let's go check that out. So dust is going to be the serpent's meat, right? Well, in Genesis 2, 2 chapter, chapter 2, verse 7, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Now, let's go to Genesis chapter 3. And verse 12. And the man, all right, so this is the fall, okay? Eve ate of the tree of good and evil, right? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Yeah, it's the serpent's fault, right? And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity, which is hatred, and I will put enmity between thee, the serpent, and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. All right, so who is this serpent? Well, let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter, Revelation 12 and verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. You see, Eve was not talking to a snake hanging from an apple tree. She was talking to probably one of the most beautiful of all of God's creations, an angel. And the great dr dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. All right, back to Isaiah chapter 65. And the wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. So how's dust going to be the serpent's meat? Well, guess what? In Revelation chapter 20 and verse, well, let's see, verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, Revelation 20 and verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season he was cast into the bottomless pit is that in the earth possibly that's what i was thinking so what's what's he going to eat dust the dust of the earth i suppose so all right all right let's go back to romans rule uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 9. 
that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ. In his precious name, amen.